So welcome to CodeBlaze and first of all let me get some queries out of the way. So recently I decided to rename my channel. So earlier it was Blazing Gamer and now it's called CodeBlaze. So the main thinking behind that was uh, when I decided the name Blazing Gamer I was actually thinking of making a gaming channel but then I started with my university and I didn't get any time to like I didn't have time to play games so the only thing I was doing was coding and actually thought it would be fun if I start creating programming tutorials so code blaze the name sounds more related to that field but that's just a little thing that I wanted to get out there and anyway in this video we will be uh, looking over a spring boot uh, react starter project that I created uh, in Gradle so like a big overview would be like we have this gradle project which has two gradle sub modules one is the api which is your basic spring boot application so there is nothing much here and then there's this web module which is your uh, basic uh, react project so the main logic that goes around is like we have your root project which is spring react and which includes these two sub modules and I'm using few Gradle plugins that help me uh, build no, node projects basically. So whether it be React, Angular, anything can work with this. And there's a plugin called um, Node Gradle plugin, which you can use and you can define the version of Node that you want to use. So uh, the version of Node that this project will use, like the React project inside this will be 20.3. Uh, 12.13 so that's the latest LTS as of the time I'm recording and also you can have uh, if you want you you can use yarn also and I'm actually using yarn myself and I just find it a little bit better than npm and with uh, specifying few directories like where actually your node.js executable will be added so it creates a local copy of node and yarn you can use a system-wide version also but there's a little more configuration that goes if you want to use the uh, system wide node or yarn but uh, this local one also works and another thing is your node modules directory that you need to give and that's where all your node modules will go then i have um, created a task which copies everything that's in the build folder so when you build a react project you get this index html some javascript and css okay so this copy to web app folder basically takes everything that's there in this web app folder and adds it to the static folder of the spring application so that why that way when uh, we actually do a production run of this uh, project we are able to serve uh, react through spring so to make the development easier also there are more such tasks in the api file also you can see there is these two tasks production run and production jar which basically uh, depend on the copy web app and the default spring boot run and boot jar uh, commands so what happens is before basically just before running your boot run or boot jar we just need to copy the web app and copy web app uh, on itself depends on yarn build so yarn so every time we will copy we will get the latest version so the reason to have two such ways like you can now start the spring server in two uh, configurations there's the dev configuration and the prod configuration so dev configuration is your basic spring like uh, the boot run there's nothing changed in that so if I do this and just do a run it will just normally start the spring server now uh, the reason to have these two separate uh, configuration is now when I'm doing a development run I can separately start my react server uh, like I can serve react through webpack only so that while development I will have the hot reloading capabilities on the front end and while production run uh, basically serves the react through your uh, spring static files can be served from react and in the end react will create static HTML JS and CSS so we can just serve with that now if I do a react serve 
so you can see we have spring dev running here and react serve in a separate terminal so this will basically start the development server and this is just opening okay so we get this um, your basic create react app the default application that comes with it now if you make any changes to the react application so inside the web src app um, let's just say we change this to dev run okay, dev run and we just press ctrl s which signals uh, intellij to recompile and we have the changes applied and you can see we get hot reload also now instead if we just close this and stop everything and now we can do a production run of spring so when we do this you can see the node tasks are also getting executed yarn install has already been done now we are doing the build which is creating an optimized production builder for the react app and at the end we will copy it into the static folder of uh, our spring project so you can see we build these javascript uh, bundles and there you can see the task copy web app was also executed and now spring has started on localhost 8080 so if i just go on to there and we have our react app which is being served through spring and that is the whole point of the start project now when one now because we are running a production build here hot reload won't work so even if you make changes to the react code there won't be any updation because for code to be uh, shown through spring it needs to be built and copied over to the static folder so um, this is really a very bare bone starter project like you can even create this project in an hour or so but uh, if you want to go ahead and work with spring and react um, you can try this project out and there may be some like uh, problems with jars uh, i have tried building jars and serving through jar also and on my machine it's working but uh, i can't say that for sure because there can be weird issues when it comes to jars and another reason why i wanted to make this start project is because uh, i'm actually going to start a tutorial series which will like it will be an application which will dev be developed in spring react and it will have an android application also so it will be a complete solution and it's quite an interesting project that uh, I'm very looking forward to start. So if you want to get updates about that project and if you or if you like the starter projects that I create whether it be for Angular Electron and Spring Boot and React then please do leave a like and subscribe and if you have any other suggestions do leave them down in the comments. Thank you.